Your numbers are not exactly where we want them to be right now. I don't know what you're doing down there, but I think you need to step it up a little bit. You know what? There's not enough fun things for my kid to do. What, what kind of things are you guys doing anyway? Shorts, flip-flops, t-shirt? What are we at the beach? This is a church. In the last two months, I've been here at least twice and you weren't around. What are you doing all day? Bruh, how many kids you got in your youth group? I, I, well, we have like 1,500 and there's like 2,000 people in our church. I told my lead pastor, what are you doing? I mean, I got students showing up. You got to get some adults. How many kids you got in your youth group? In youth ministry, there are a lot of expectations that are placed upon us, right? That everybody has their own expectation. Your, your lead pastor, elders, people in your church, students, parents, everybody has expectations. Sometimes it can be really difficult to walk through all of that. Now, I want to talk specifically about what we measure today. Yes, numbers are important, right? There's a, there's a whole book in the Bible called Numbers, and you can read through a whole bunch of things about numbers in there, but ultimately that book is a, a metaphor for us about our walking through our own wilderness journey. Numbers are indicative of something that's happening, right? So if you're your youth ministry is growing in numbers. There's something going on that is helping that to become a reality. But it shouldn't be the only number that is focused on. The problem is we worry about our, how are we compared to the youth ministry down the road or on the other side of town that's really exploding and what's happening to us? Are we doing anything? Don't try to compare us to and it can get overwhelming. That's the enemy coming in to attack. I think something that's better to focus on is helping people understand what the win is in your ministry. And that win should be helping students take the next step in their faith journey. That can look like all sorts of things. It can be a first time decision for Christ. It could be stepping into regular attending in your student services. It could be serving. It could be getting plugged into a student leadership team. It can be involved in helping plan your outreach. Like there's all sorts of numbers that you can share that are about students taking the next step in owning their faith in Jesus. Imagine if you told stories of students who have taken steps forward to owning their faith. Like we had eight students who went out to the shelter this weekend and served people. Wouldn't that be amazing? Or I don't know if you've noticed, but we've got 15 students in our student leadership program who are going through the book of John this month, and they're sharing what they're learning. And you might even notice them sitting in the front rows at church with journals taking notes as the pastor's speaking. Or we had 30% more students at our event last week than we normally do because our students are owning their faith and getting on board and realizing they are the ones that need to invite their friends to church to be part of something. Matter of fact, 75% of our regular attending students invited at least one friend to our event. Isn't that amazing? Those kind of numbers will blow people away. If your big win is helping students take steps towards owning their faith, the numbers piece will take care of itself and people will start noticing. But you have to start telling stories. You have to share the stories with your church, with your leadership, with your pastor. They need to hear all of these things that are going on. And if they're not going on, maybe your challenge today is to start praying through what do you need to do to help students start owning their faith? What are the steps you need to take? And maybe it's something inside that you need to go, God, I need to give up trying to outdo the church down the road or outdo something I saw on TikTok and just start being with Jesus and asking him what he wants for you and for the ministry that you're leading. So here's my challenge to you. What is one step you can focus on taking this week that will help your students start owning their faith? Start telling stories like this. Well, let me tell you about Marley. She was completely disengaged and not really involved in what was going on in youth group. She didn't want to talk or say anything. Now her mom after camp is seeing her read her Bible on her own unprompted. Isn't that amazing? Well, let me tell you about Gabriel. 
Gabriel cannot sit still, but God did something in his life. And I want to tell you that in youth group this past week, he sat still in the service, was completely engaged. He even asked some questions. Can you believe that? Let me tell you about Damien. Damien is our student who gets in trouble at school. He gets in trouble at home. He gets in trouble at youth group. He is now serving in our church coffee cart. And he, every single week, is serving God by serving others. That's awesome. So last night, I saw Nathan lead his entire team in prayer before and after the game right on the field. It was incredible. And they had a tough game. They played really hard. They actually went into overtime. And during that night, not only did I get to connect with Nathan and encourage him, I talked to his family, I talked to students that go to his school, and I talked to some other parents. It was such a great night of connecting with people who don't typically come to church. And I'm telling you, I was so encouraged, I was blessed, and I'm, I'm praying that those people would end up showing up at church. Wouldn't that be amazing? Thanks for jumping on to the Practical Youth Ministry Tips podcast. I hope this is encouraging to you. Uh, by the way, like... I, on the kind of this full circle strategy, I'm going to link a video at the end here uh, that talks about this full circle strategy of really diving in. You want to see your numbers grow? Own this strategy and you will see these, all of these areas increase as you start investing in students taking their next step of owning their faith. One of the things I'd love to give to you just as a free resource if you haven't already gotten it is speaking of the outreach piece is and in your service is a games ebook. I wrote this ebook and a companion audiobook that's free. I'd love to give to you as a gift if you haven't gotten it. The link is in the description below. And if this was helpful to you, would you share it with somebody? I'd really appreciate that and I'm certain somebody else would appreciate that as well. Until next time, we'll catch you next week on the podcast right here. See you.